greetings and welcome to the broadcast. I'm your host today, Maggie Cavanaugh with Moving Forward Ministries. And today I have Crystal Joy with me. And Crystal is like a sister from another mom. I like when I read her bio, I was like, I love this woman. I love her because she does so many things. And people always tell me, you know, you got too many things going on. And I'm like, you haven't looked at Crystal's bio because <laughs> she does it all. <laughs> Wow. Crystal, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maggie. I am so desperately excited to see you this morning. It is a huge blessing to see that I am not the only one that has a, a full plate. <laughs> you know, I, I believe sometimes that the Lord entrusts us with different things at different seasons. Because I know, like for me, there was many years where I was just knee deep into counseling all the way. Do I still do it? Yes, I do it some. And other times that I was like in this season now, I'm knee deep in media. Uh, and so there's just different times. But he takes and he intertwines all of our stuff and makes this woven uh, tapestry of his work. And I see that when I look at all the things that you do, because I know you work on the radio station. Is it uh, 92? 92Q, it's WQQK, it's 92.1 on your FM dial. If you're in Nashville, if not, then you can go to 92Q national.com and listen online so that's Yay. anywhere in the world mm -hmm. i love that and now i know that's a part-time thing for you but what mm -hmm. got you into that i know you're, you have a background and as an actress and speaker and just all kinds of different things what drew you into radio actually i uh was like a program director in radio and i was on the air and during the news and everything um coming out of college undergrad Okay. And once I left for uh, different reasons, I won't even mention, uh, <laughs> as it turns out, I, I made up my mind I was never going to go back. <laughs> and when the offer came up for the station here, because uh, it's a powerful woman named Connie Donnell, who was retiring, um, I turned it down because uh, I, I swore I wanted to keep to my word, you know. <laughs> But after some prayer, I mean, lots and lots of prayer, I said, OK, God, I'll go back. And this time it's gospel. When I was in it years ago, it was R&B radio. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I love good gospel music. So that's mm -hmm. super exciting. So when can viewers find you on that station? Uh, every Sunday morning, uh, central time, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Sunday morning. I love that. I love that because you do. It's so, I, I see that you're so passionate about the Lord and all of the things that you do. And I was on your website earlier looking at all the amazing information, things coming down the pike and things that are currently um, you're doing. But something that really jumped out at me was your resources on mental health. Oh. And, I was super excited when I seen that because we know, you know, right now, this is the end of July. For those of you viewers that are watching this at a later date, 2021, post COVID, get everybody getting it back together, everybody getting all the resources they need to be emotionally healthy. And sometimes in the church in the past has been like, well, you just don't have enough faith. Or if you would just pray more whenever it comes to mental health issues. And that's really for me, I'm like, yes, we need faith. And yes, we need prayer. But I cannot stand it when people put God in a box because, yes, we know he's the healer. But people have a process to work through. And, you know, we are all we all have a soul, which is our mind and our will and our emotions. And they get so jacked up because we're in the world and there's so much coming at us. And there's a lot of mental health things going on out there. I mean, I constantly have to check myself. You know, I told I told the kids Saturday night that I was in a small group with, I told them, I said, you need to do what the rappers say and check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> because you are going to you have to have the mind of Christ. But so many yes. people don't know Jesus. And even mm -hmm. when you do know Jesus, sometimes you know you're just crawling to the altar instead of running. <laughs> so what mm -hmm. what made you so passionate about mental health? Uh, about uh, six years ago or so, six or seven years ago, I was uh, seriously committing suicide, wow. considering committing suicide. And um, it's I, I never thought I would ever I used to think when people say, 
you know, I want to commit suicide. I'm like, you stupid. You realize how good God is? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Until I went through a series of things Mm -hmm. that was so devastating. It was more devastating than I realized the devastation uh, to get me to the point where I just said, you know what? Hmm. I don't really need to be here. This Um, is a waste of time. I've got great uh, uh, life insurance. (laughs) My sister will really be hooked up. And people, you know, they go to funerals and they cry. And then then it's all over with and everybody forgets about you. So I said, I think I'm going to I'm going to exit stage left. Here's the part that got me. Was when I was contemplating it and I was planning it. And I was trying to figure out how to do it. It scared me, Mm. but I was determined to do it. However, Mm. I was like, God, what am I thinking? But the longer I was in that thought process, the more I was planning to just follow through with it. Well, I thank God for, and you were talking about, you were talking earlier about just pray, just pray. You're not praying hard enough. You're not believing God. Mm-hmm. Believe in God and praying. It's like praying for what? You're praying for resolve. You're praying for something to take place or or some tool that God has given you to be able to help to nourish the right things in you. So you yes. will not process through something that God has not called you to do. Well, there was something that uh, my counselor, because you talk about counseling. Ugh, I think it's every important. Counselor- if you, yes. been, if, you, if you can talk, if you've been old enough to, to get a language, you, you need counseling. I'm just saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it should be a requirement of life. <laughs> I think so, too. And it's just I think that um, it's become more popular, but I, it, it's in some arenas it comes across as like a fad or something. But if you do not have a good surrounding of people um, or even if you you do have a great surrounding of people that are easy to talk to, sometimes you don't feel safe because of what you're dealing with. Or sometimes you don't feel safe, meaning I work in ministry full time at my church. Sure. And during that time when I was going through, I mean, the enemy was really working because so many people in my church were going through similar things and a whole lot of other things that were just overwhelming. So the counselors were very busy. <laughs> sure. And I felt like, you know, they don't really have time for me. And mm-hmm. I work here. So you're supposed to have it together. And that's one thing that we need to, in one area with mental health, that I think every counselor should have a counselor. Amen. Uh, a I have one. Counselor. <laughs> yeah. You know, the Bible says out of the multitude of counselors, there's There's safety. safety. And and one version says a multitude of advisors. And so Mm -hmm. a strong support system. But you you hit on something I just want to piggyback on real quick. It's Mm -hmm. so important what you just said, because you said, I work here and I'm supposed to have it together because people look at us in ministry like we don't ever have any problems. Mm. You know, and so whenever and the enemy is constantly throwing out those lies of, Mm -hmm. well, you got to you got to look like you got it together. And that's where the church as a whole and I'm not bashing the church. I love the church. But as a whole, we put on that face and we put on that smile. We pull up our bootstraps and we just hallelujah and get on about our (laughs) way. And we're bleeding to death on the inside. And people have to. it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay Mm -hmm. to stay there. We have to have that surrounding a support system we have to have that good counselor and we have to have you know find out why am i under attack what is going on here am i having hormonal stuff or am i just you know is it spiritual warfare what is going on so go ahead chris so i'm sorry i just had to add that <laughs> you are really my sister because that's, <laughs> that's where i was going that's where i was going it's oh, um sorry. we <laughs> we have to not um I think that we we have to pull ourselves. Okay, let me let me put it this way. Okay. Even Jesus, the Savior, took a break. Oh, Even yeah, yeah. Jesus, the Savior, uh, uh, was looking for support. I mean, when he was at Gethsemane, he was like, "Couldn't y'all stay up? <laughs> Couldn't you stay awake? Couldn't you just 
eat some cookies or something and pick up your energy. You know, even he needed to know that he had the surroundings of the support yes. of those he was always with, but they're not always able to do that, you know? Right. Uh, so it's, even if it's just asking others for prayer, um, that is a huge help as well as getting counseling. It yes. was through the counselors that, and they, I told my counselor big lie and, uh, God forbid if she's watching because she kept asking me. Oh. She said, this is a lot, Crystal. Are you considering suicide? Keep in mind, I'm an actress. So I said, wow, <laughs> oh, girl, that's crazy. I'm not going to do that. Knowing full well, this was the next thing that I was planning on doing. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted people to be, uh, um, when it comes to mental health, to not label it cuckoo, you're crazy, or you're going nuts, or something is wrong with you, or I knew your mother was offering, you know, stop it. The Bible says, talks about renewing your mind so many times. Now, why does the Bible say that? Because he knows, God knows that a lot of garbage is being put into your head that you have to get out on a consistent basis. Because after a while, it starts to make sense, the foolishness the lies from the enemy, if depending upon how much hurt you have or resentment or even pride, it starts I don't to want to interrupt sense. you, but we lost signal for just a second. So I just want you to rewind and restate that. I'm sorry. And it probably won't come out the same way. But, but we literally, my screen went and I was like, I was taking authority over the enemy because he don't want to get this word out because he wants people to stay in the plane. But it was, it was spinning a little bit and I don't want to miss a morsel of this to the audience. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, mm -hmm. Crystal, and just go back just a couple seconds here. Okay. Just um, the only thing I'm saying is that the Bible repeats, you know, about renewing your mind. And yes. God is not going to tell you to renew your mind if there's not something in your mind or a potential of some things that come to your mind that you didn't even ask for that, that destroy sound thinking, thinking the way God thinks. And if you're not constantly aware of the importance of doing that, even when it seems like everything's all fine and, oh, I'm good, I'm good. We, we need to continually put the word in our hearts and in our minds and continue yes. to stay connected to God. It's not just opening the book and reading and memorizing. It's staying connected to the one who keeps us refueled in yes. understanding. Because sometimes, have you noticed that sometimes you read a scripture and you're like, oh, and then you read it a year later, you're like, oh. There's always <laughs> another onion layer coming off of wisdom that God gives us. And if we don't take advantage of that, the enemy will take advantage of us. Yes. So we have to be cautious of that. Oh my goodness, that is so good. And it's so funny you mentioned the onion because I actually use the analogy of an onion of cutting it open, showing that some layers are thicker and some are thinner and there's different things that we go through. And you're absolutely right. If mm -hmm. we don't deal with that, then it's going to come out in unhealthy ways. And, oh, it, you know, so many people, some people it comes out with addiction issues. Some people it comes out with self-harm. Mm -hmm. Some people it comes out with self-sabotage. We just, we really don't know. And that's why for those of you watching and you're thinking, well, you know, so-and-so is a real case and I just can't even, everybody's got a battle and we need to extend grace and mercy where we can. And I've dealt a lot with, you know, family members and friends and in ministry of people that have different times where it, it, they're under attack mentally. Mm -hmm. it, and, and, and you mentioned the mind of Christ and having the mind of Christ. And a lot of times we throw that out there and people really don't know what that means. And I think you just gave a very important description of it because it's not just like mental exercise. I'm going to read my Bible and I'm going to read my devotional and you know, that type of thing. It is literally staying connected to the source. You know, God is like the, your extension cord to peace. <laughs> He is the, yes. he's, you've got to plug it in. It yes. will not work. You can hold it in your hands and you can plug in whatever it is you're trying to get. But if you do not plug it into the power source, you're not going to get anything. And then you're going to get frustration and frustration leads to all kinds of things. So I watched uh, with my granddaughter, uh, one of my youngest granddaughters last night, the Pilgrim's Progress. Yes. I, I, I finally saw this. that about a month ago. It was really yes. good. Yeah, the new one from like 2019, that one, the animated one. Is that the one you seen? Yes. 
<laughs> That's the exact one. It was so good because I, I, it's been around since the 1600s. Okay. And I've been a Christian for a long time and I teach in a uh, homeschool tutorial on Mondays. And it's so funny because Pete, this name, this, this title of this book has come up time after time, after time, again and again and again in so many circles. And I was like, Ooh, I'm a bad Christian. I have never read the Pilgrim's Progress. And so, <laughs> you hadn't either. Okay. I feel a little bit better than I'm not alone. That was my first time actually knowing the story and seeing it was that cartoon about a month ago. It was powerful. It is. It is. It Such really, an really is. allegory of what we go through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think what, what was so powerful about it is it's a mind thing. And yes. the things that were, were was said in the lines that each character had, it it reminded me of the fact that that you always have to ask yourself what my mom used to say when I would say something, just pop off with something. And she, where'd you get that from? Oh. Who told you that? Oh, good. What, where are you getting that from? If it's not from in the word, who gave you that? Send it back, rebuke it. Come on. <laughs> Move it. You know, even if something that is said is a truth, that it's still, if it's layered, if it's not layered in love, mm -hmm. pure, unadulterated, God fearing love, then yes. to hold off on that, you know? Because mm -hmm. uh, you could find yourself being steered in a direction that you never anticipated. And I'm going to be, um, mm, I'm going to be transparent right now. Go for when it, girl. I, I like transparency. That's how people get free. My, amen. Amen. I was I had no idea the world was going to become like it like it has now. But when I was growing up, I built up a tremendous resentment about being a female because there was so much badgering about either you were you were the top of the line, Virgin Mary, or you were a complete Jezebel. There was nothing in between, even in the church. It's like your value and your purpose was surrounded by a man. Mm -hmm. And if you did not have a man, then you were insignificant. You were a maid, you were a secretary, or you were just something that was a dumping ground for everybody else. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, my parents did that on purpose or taught that on purpose or anything like that, but you were surrounded. Society was like that. Yeah. The churches were the like culture. that politics of the culture, everything. So I had made up my mind and I didn't want to be a man. Right, I didn't right. want to do that either because <laughs> I didn't want all of the, the real biblical responsibilities of manhood. I was like, uh-uh, that means I got to start life all over again. So I wasn't planning on making any changes. Okay. <laughs> I decided this sounds so crazy, but the enemy gave me this concept of just becoming an it. Oh, wow. Is that not crazy? Is that not going on? Becoming an it. I wasn't male or female. You could not pigeonhole me wow. into either one. That way I can live free and I can be free and I can be me. What is that? That is not God. So yeah. I had to understand that a lot of the stipulations and a lot of the degradation that was taking place in culture had nothing to do with God, but right. everything to do with the mindset of those who created these rules and this culture. So yeah. coming into that revelation, I was like, thank you, Jesus. Who in the world wants to go around being known as it? That right. does not work. But unfortunately, um, that has become the mindset of so many people I've run into where something devastating has happened to them. Mm -hmm. Something awful has happened to them. Uh, yes. Severe abuse where you really make up your mind that if this is what it means to be a woman, if this is what it means to be a man, I'm out. Mm -hmm. I think I'll try this route. And the enemy has tried all kinds of tricks for the trade uh, when it comes to not just his sexuality, but even your, your purpose. Um, right. Where you're going, where you start mimicking other people and you're like, what? what? What are you doing? That's not even you. You need to be doing this. But unless you know, bottom line, you got to know God for yourself. That's you right. Must. 
This is no condemnation of anything that I am saying or anything like that. It's just an awareness of how the enemy works on your mind. Yes. On a 24-7 basis, even in your dreams. So, yes. you know, the now, lay, now I'm lay me down to sleep. You know, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul. You need to also pray, God, crucify all of the things or yes. demonic dreams that will come to mind or crazy thoughts that will come in while I'm in my sleep. Um, protect my mind. Renew, yes. help me to renew my mind because this right here means everything. Your heart can stop. And if your mind is still ticking, you're still alive. That's right. That's exactly right. And so many people, you know, it's funny. It's funny that you quoted that prayer. I said that prayer as a little girl growing up. I changed it when I got older to, you know, help watch me safely through the night instead of if I should die before I wake. I'm like, I'm not going to let my grandkids confess that crap over their life. They will not die. They will live and not die. They will see the goodness of the Lord. <laughs> but you, you know, two things super important. One is the purpose and passion. And that's what the enemy is after. That's why there's this whole identity crisis of people not knowing who they are, what they're called to. And it's so incredibly important, Crystal, that we pray for this generation because they have been indoctrinated. They have been indoctrinated because the world has come in with their system of you can be whatever you want to be. And yes, you can. You can choose your career. You can choose who you marry and all of that. But right. And so now there's this whole confusion. And I deal a lot with younger people. And it is incredibly common, even in the church, people, mm -hmm. the kids, they don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. And it's so, it's so sad. That's why I think the, I, your identity in who God created you to be, not who the world says you are, not who some influencer on TikTok says you are, not, you know, and you also, the other thing you mentioned was about abuse. And a lot of times the majority of people that I talk to that struggle with their sexuality or struggle with their identity in general, you know, you throw the sexual part out, just not even knowing who they are, what they're called to and all of that. It usually comes from a place of trauma. And so trauma is the gateway. OK, we talk about gateway drugs. Trauma is the gateway to all of the things that if it's not dealt with and put in its proper place, again, it will manifest in other areas. And so if you've been abused by a man. You, you know, and you're bitter about men, you know, then you may turn the direction of a female. And so exactly. And so it's like incredibly crazy what we're seeing going on right now. And it's a hurting generation. But it's, it's interesting. I've watched it over the years. And the fact that you mentioned that you that those thoughts threw at you. I'm just an it. I'm a nobody. I'm just, you know, and, and that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that you're fearfully and wonderfully made, you know, and he has a plan and a purpose and, and knowing all of the things you've been involved in. I'm so grateful that you did not listen to the lies and you took authority over it. And you had a mama that was like, who's told you that? You know, where'd that come from? Reject it, delete, cancel, rebuke it. Because see, I, you know, I, I grew up Catholic. OK, so it was like there was no rebuking going on. I didn't know what rebuke was. There was no taking your thoughts captive. It was like, go say your Hail Marys and you're good. Now, those of you watching this that are Catholic, I'm not meaning that, you know, I'm not bashing your choice of denominational preference. What I'm saying to you is I'm that was my experience. My experience was very weak. I did not have a relationship with Christ. And, you know, many of my viewers know already that it was many years later. And this is after going to church and having the Bible on my coffee table and all of those things. It doesn't make you uh, a Christian. It is the renewed mind. It is the mind of Christ. It is the surrender, the sacrifice of die flesh. You know, I decrease, he increases and then allowing him to flow through us to reach others. And I see you doing that. Oh, yeah. You you know what? Um, so I heard a minister say, and it's so true. I've heard several ministers say this. When you purchase a car and you drive off the lot, at some point or another, you're going to need what? Fuel. Maintenance. Oh, fuel. fuel. Yes. Skip the maintenance. Just fuel <laughs> alone. Right. Now, over a period of time, as you grow older, just like a car grows older, it needs maintenance. Yep. Just like you said. So if we can do that for material things that have no eternal life, 
Right. Why won't we do that for ourselves? Mm, and we so have to be consistent about it. Before, yes. if you if we were blessed with excellent parents, they were the ones that were was doing it and 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 taught us through action of how to stay consistent with that. But once you get to a certain age and you know this is something you need to do, yeah, you have to, or you're going to die inside. And if you die inside, there's everything else is like death to mm -hmm. you. Everything else, you, you, you don't care about it, not in a real sense of love. And, and so many people have gotten a, a misinterpretation of what love is. You have to get yes. it from the one who made it, the one who is love. If you don't get an understanding from him, and it's an ongoing process, if you don't get an understanding from him, then what are you pulling from? You're either pulling from your flesh, your own knowledge, or you're pulling from the enemy, putting garbage in your head. Now, don't yeah. get me wrong. that it's Sometimes the stuff that you pull out, it seems satisfactory for the moment. It seems wonderful. I feel good. I, they don't know what they're talking about. You keep your little Jesus thing. You don't know what you're talking about. But over time, you start to see it in their faces. You start to see it in their actions, yes. regardless of what it is that the, the enemy has has done to, to give you the mindset to pull away from God or to disregard God, it starts to show. I've never seen it fail. Even those who came to the Lord and then left and said, I don't, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want, there's some things that has, that you can see it in their faces. Yes. You can see it in their actions. You can see it in their tone and everything. They may not want to admit to it, but it does change you. It starts to kill you from the inside and it shows on the outside. Wow. That's so good. That's so good. And it's so true. I tell you, there's nothing worse than a backsliding Christian. You know, so the people that have not, you know, given their life to the Lord, they don't know. But the people that have, they're always, you know, there's that they know, you know, and it's the truth that, you know, that sets you free. And it's so important. And so I want to go back to where you were in that dark place. And I know you mentioned that you got counseling and you did. Obviously, you're here. So the enemy did not win and take you out. So how did you break free from the mindset? When did you recognize, hey, this thought is trying to take me out? Where, where did that come in? What happened? Um. I think this kind of, this is an example of some things that I, I talk about in my book, uh, Who Art in Heaven, The Divine Symmetry of uh, Arts and Academics. There are tools that God has given us, practical tools. God is not just, you know. <laughs> so stop thinking that God is practical too. And there was a, a test that my uh, counselor gave me and said, you know, it's only a couple of bucks online. If you don't have it, I'll cover it for you because I know right now with all of what you're going through, finances are tight. That's a good counselor. Love her. And uh, she said, but I take this test. She said, I think it will do something for you. And I said, OK. She said, are you good at taking tests? I said, not if you're looking for a right answer. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I have to study for that. She said, nope. this particular test is just to um evaluate the questions that you have how you've answered the questions and then it will conclude who you are how you tick how you think how you process and what to do with those gifts that god has given you i said okay fine i was like let me take this stupid test because i gotta hurry up and commit suicide and get this over with so I took the test and when I got to the end, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of Big Brother, but I started freaking out as I was reading and I said, oh my God, that's me, that's me. And the more I looked at the response, the, the conclusion of everything, I, I could feel God just rushing through me. Mm -hmm. This is who you are. This is what I've called you to do. And you want to check out? And I couldn't, it, once it, I had been exposed, I couldn't turn back to, to all of it. And I'm not saying that the depression left immediately. Sure. But a greater part of, of excitement and thrill of being who I am. Oh my God. <laughs> I was going to tell that. 
I got to do that. Oh and it was so exciting to me. And it was, the biggest part was, you get me, God. You get me. And you exactly. showed me through this tool online, just answering a bunch of questions. I mean, and I'm just like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, nope, nope, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, nope, nope. <gasps> it was awesome. So sometimes God will always send you either a person or a particular tool, for lack of a better word, to help you to, to get yourself back up. Mm -hmm. into recognizing who you are and whose you are. Yes. Because the whose you are is greater than the who you are. If you don't know whose you are, it's it's harder to determine who you are. And mm -hmm. until you determine who you are, knowing whose you are gives you a piece of, well, he'll show me in a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. He's got me until I figure <laughs> out until he shows me or, or I get a revelation of who I am. And the purposes that God has given me has had me so excited. I said, I can't die. Mm -hmm. I can't because I need to accomplish these things because yes. these people need me. They need me. And to come from a background where you're always needed was exhausting. Yes. But I got a totally different perspective yes. of people needing me. I also need me. I need me to take care of me. And so many of us women do not. We Come put on. ourselves on the back burner and we'll say, well, I'll get to me later. They right. really need this. Well, guess what? I ain't had any sleep. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. You have to make up your <laughs> mind to schedule yourself for yourself. Now, yes. don't think I have arrived. Don't think I have arrived. It is still a working progress. It took years before it registered with me. This is how much God knows that we need rest. It took years before it registered with me that uh, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Commandment is a commandment. It is not a question. It is not a, you know, it might work if you get some rest. No, it is a commandment. Yes. So all these years I've been disobedient. I was hurting myself. So now I do my best to try, and I don't always succeed, to try to get a Sabbath day, even if I have to split the days in half, where right. I cut everything off at noon, and I'm like, okay, I'm out, I'm asleep, go away, you know, to do absolutely nothing, which was hard for me, <laughs> I'm sure for you too, because it's like, oh, I have a great idea. Oh, I can do this. Oh, I can do this. Well, let me just say, it only takes five minutes. And five minutes always takes a couple of hours. So <laughs> learning to rest, that helps you mentally. Yes. To learn how to rest and to yes. learn to, to do things for yourself and for others. All yes. of it works together. All of it. You have to keep it all in mind. Mm -hmm. That is so incredibly true. And I am just, I'll tell you, we could talk about this topic for hours. You know, I listen for the viewers, you guys know, I had told Crystal, I said, oh, we'll go about 20, 30 minutes. And we've been going at it for quite a while. But it's because this topic is so incredibly important. And we, you know, so I would love to have you back and let's talk more about self care because you hit on that. And so many times we think, you know, we take the scripture and we wear it like a badge. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And as type A personalities, you know, we're just like, I can do this and I can do that. And, you know, da -da 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 -da. and before we know it, we're exhausted. And the reason this is so important is because it wears on your health. I'm a perfect example of that. I used to make this statement, Crystal, that I used to say early in my ministry, I would say, oh, I'll rest when I'll get to heaven. We are sisters. Yes. We are sisters. <laughs> That's crazy. It hearing, is crazy. It, hearing it back, it's like, wait a minute. I was thinking the same. Mm -hmm. We got work to do. Let's get her done. You know, no, God wants us to, to walk in his supernatural peace. But you know what got me is my brother, my very wise brother. He's 69 years old and the baby and nine kids. And my brother, Ronnie, said to me, you know, sis, do you think that you're better than the Lord? And I was like, what? You know? And he's like, well, you know, he took a rest. He took a Sabbath. He drew away. And so I was like, I recognized at that point I was in sin. I was, you know, disobedience, even with good intentions is still disobedience. 
And so I started, my husband and I were trying to do it quarterly, but it's only working out where twice a a year where we go off and shut down. We just went, I I went to the faraway land, Manchester. Okay. It's 30 minutes from where I live. (laughs) I used to live near there. I used to to live in Beach Grove. So I know exactly where you're going. I live in Beach Grove. Okay. I grew up in Beach Grove, Indiana, and I live in Beach Grove, Tennessee. I know, right? Oh, girl, wow. we can talk about for hours. But I live in Beach Grove, and when and we went away, and we shut down into like kind of like a tiny house that had no internet and no TV, and it was liberating and is so important. Yeah. So I was looking on your website, and you've got something that's coming down the pike. How far down the pike is that coming? I noticed there was some stuff on there about. Um, and we could talk about it later, but it was talking about rest, going away and resting with no internet. Oh, um, I did it once. I did okay. it once. And that was, that was during the time that I was considering suicide. <laughs> of all things to do, you shouldn't be going somewhere alone. Right. But I was in a, a place that, um, uh, they, I think they did have internet and I, I could feel the spirit telling me to shut it down. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, there's something significant and we, we all have to be careful about too much of this Oh, girl! Yeah. and, and too much computer, anything. I think it, it, it actually, it's an, I, it's, I wanted to say artificial intelligence, but no, it's, it's an artificial connection. Now, it's a great substitute if somebody's in the hospital and with all of it that has happened with um, the pandemic, et cetera, it's a great substitute, but it's not the real deal. Mm, it's, yes. it's, there's something significant about, okay, let me give you an example. Like if you have a married couple, you can only go so long just communicating with each other by phone, or computer or online and saying, hey, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> I mean, after a while, it's like, okay. Okay, now what? You know, there's something significant about uh, spending personal time with the Lord as well as corporate time with the Amen. Lord. There's, Amen. It's two different things, okay? We, we have to, we've run out of recognizing balance. It's like when we get something new, we run it into the ground. And, yes. and that ends up robbing us from other areas that need to be fulfilled. Mm-hmm. We have to stay balanced. Yes. And part of staying balanced and, and uh, is boundaries. <laughs> balance oh. and boundaries. Because mm-hmm. in order to stay balanced, you have to be able to say no. You yes. have to be able no to cut things off. y'all. No, it's spiritual. I used to think I was a sinner if I didn't say yes to everything everybody asked me to do because, oh, yep. you need me. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm-mm. I mean, you could do it in love and just say, you know what, precious, it's, I, I can't put it in I on can. the calendar. But I tell you what, you know, let's look at the calendar again next week and see how that goes, you know. And being able to say no and let me check my calendar, that took some years. And it's still, still kind of working because sometimes some people can pull, tug at you more than others. Yes. And we but, have to discern what season we're in and what the Lord is asking us to do at that time. So, so your book is going, a new revision is coming out, hopefully at the first of the year. So talk a little bit about your book. Okay. Uh, my book is called Who Art in Heaven? The Divine Symmetry of Arts and Academics. And it really kind of gives a breakdown of like, uh, four different academic arenas, main academic arenas, and four main artistic arenas. And how, um, oh, how can I sum this up? Uh, we were created with a left brain and right brain, but one is not more significant than the other. And you, in order to work one side of my body, I have to depend on that side, the opposite side of the brain and vice versa. Yes. Just like God gave that example or showed us how it has to interact and we have to have the wholeness, the fullness of, of ourselves. We also have to have the fullness of each other. 
So mm -hmm. if I am really artistically inclined, you can't just disregard me because you are really analytical and, and academically inclined and you have so much wisdom about math and science, et cetera. <laughs> you need me just as much as I need you. Not necessarily Amen. for me to dance around and entertain you, but let me give you an example of how in science, um, doctors in the medical field, imagine what it would be like if doctors did not have illustrations in their books or on videos, et cetera. We, oh, wow. I'm like, you don't know what my heart is. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> But let's look at the picture real quick before you start cutting things. You know, we need that. We need that. And yeah. who did that? It's somebody that is an artist, but who understands how to illustrate things. And that's just one of many examples of how we need to stay connected and respect each other and respect yes. the gifts that God has given us. On the other side of the, the coin, with an extension of that, I should say, is the benefits of somebody who had a really good analytical mind of how the mind works and what things connect what questions to put it in that test that i had the opportunity to take that changed my mind about suicide because mm -hmm. i saw the value of who i was because somebody who has a great mind on their, uh, what is it, on the left side, <laughs> left brain, has a strong left brain, was able to put that particular test together. We need every one of us. Yes. Now, if, even if somebody created computers, but they didn't put any kind of colors or designs or anything, it's just straight words all the way across, <laughs> and that's it. That's not gonna work. You have to have somebody with the right brain, strong right brain tendencies, uh, to be able to come up with this beautiful design of what you have that's framing up this interview. Um, we cannot go through life without, without having both. And mm -hmm. we need to use the tools and the gifts that God has given us to glorify him and bless others. So that's Ooh, basically that's what it's about. <laughs> That book is needed. And I'll tell you, y'all, let me wait for the revisions coming out, uh, hopefully around the first of the year. And I'll throw it out on my internet and stuff to let you guys know when it's out because it's incredibly important that, you know, we don't discredit other people because they're different. Because God gave us finger, look, look, mine is different than hers, you know? My hair is different than hers. But, you know, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And that's where we get so confused. And I, I do so similar assessments, actually with the kids I teach public speaking and leadership to, mm -hmm. I have them do a personality test and I have them also do a spiritual gifting test. So they get an idea of, yes, it's okay mm -hmm. if you want to be in helps because sometimes people are like, all I want to do is take out the garbage, you know, <laughs> by golly, somebody needs to take out the garbage, but there's, you know, somebody else that is extroverted and has a different personality type that needs to get up and make the announcements or whatever the case may be. We do better together. We all work together. The hands, the feet, you know, the mind, the, the creativity, you know, it's so funny, uh, Crystal, I used to make statements. I used to speak negatively over my life because I was an incredibly negative person before Jesus. And I would make statements like, I have no creativity. I'm not creative. And I'm like, wait a minute. When I became a Christian, I was like, wait a I am a daughter of the king. OK, I am, I am creative and I look for opportunities to express that, you know, even when I'm in the kitchen and I'm chopping an onion or celery this morning, I was making chicken salad and I try to do it a certain way and everything. I'm, I'm trying to flow more into that because I am. But the enemy was lying because I maybe I wasn't an actress or a singer or could play an instrument that I wasn't creative. So we've got all this misconception about who we are. And then we project that misconception on who everybody else is. So you all need to get this book because this book will help you balance that and understand how important God wants us all to work together in synergy. He wants us to work together in unity. And I'll tell you, if you, we haven't seen a lot in the last couple of years, we've seen more disunity right now than ever before. And it's heartbreaking. It's got to break the heart of the king. 
Of course, he knew it would get like this. And the enemy uses that. He plays on that. And then he comes in with the oppression and the depression and tries to crush us down to take us out before we can tell somebody the secret sauce. I'm glad you're talking about the secret sauce. I'm glad that you're boldly, transparently saying, hey, you know, don't do not, you know, go off the edge. When you see that curve coming, that you need to rest and you've been going 180 miles an hour because you know what's going to happen? You're going to go right off the edge if you do not take time for self-care and to deal with the thoughts that are coming at you and to not have. And I'm so grateful because here you are. And I, I don't know if we should say what church you work for, but it's a large church. She works for a very large church uh, in the Nashville area. Is it OK to say the name of the church? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Born again church. Born again yeah, church. In, yes. In Nashville. It's a huge church, right? Mm. <clears throat> I'd say it's medium sized now. We have to see how things change uh, after COVID is completely out of the picture. I think a lot of churches have, have made a lot of adjustments and everything. But yes, I work here full time over the uh, theater ministry. And I love that because God's using your actress, you know, all of that to help others and so forth. And it's, it's so incredibly wonderful. But she could have, she could have been like, no, I'm in leadership and I'm supposed to look like I have it together. So guess what happens to the next person that comes along that's not in leadership, right? And they're like, oh, I'm supposed to look like that. But yet she's transparent enough and open enough to say to you, as I am saying as well, and we are both encouraging you, if you are hurting, get help. If you are discouraged, get help. I mean, listen, and, and it looks different to different people, but you've got to take action. Faith mm -hmm. is action. OK, praying is important, but you get your prayer warriors and you get you a good counselor. And on her website, there is tons of mental health helps. She's got links to everything, everything from grief to you name it. It's on there. And so I want you guys to check it out is cjoyministries.com. And she is available for speaking. I hope I'm not out there throwing this out there and it's OK. But she's available to come to your church or your event to speak and and listen, y'all, you have to understand we do better together. And I'm so grateful for you taking the time. If you could leave the audience with a key, what would that key be? Oh, wow. There are two of them that uh, I usually um, have at the end of my messages when on social media. And that is the it's hashtag love the Lord your God with all your heart, mm -hmm. all your soul and all your mind mm -hmm. and love your neighbor as yourself and then i always sometimes tag in um oh how he loves you and me so it's not just a superficial oh that's so cute look at you love you know no <laughs> it's the real deal it's the real deal and those three things are things that i i promise you to just the research of that and just the love mm -hmm. of that and just the recognition of those things will make a huge difference in your life. Yes, yes. Amen, amen, and amen. So listen, y'all, we are happy that you joined the broadcast today. Please share this out with a friend, family, coworker, or anyone in your sphere of influence. You never know who is telling you, oh, no, I'm fine. I got it together. And is <laughs> contemplating making a choice that would change the landscape of everything and shut off right. them being able to minister. And we see it. We see it. We've got pastors yeah. that, yeah. you know, and the suicide rate last year went crazy out of control. So I'm going to have, if she'll agree to, and I haven't asked her this, but I'm going to have her back in September. September is not only recovery month, but it's also um, suicide awareness month. Yeah. And yeah. I would like to do an episode and I hope this is okay. I'm just talking out loud here. Joy, <laughs> Crystal, you can tell me later if you want, if you want to climb, but I think it's important that we do an episode talking about self-care, what that looks like, what it is and what it's not. Self-care is not just a mani and a petty. Not only that, that is fun <laughs> and that is cool. Okay. Self-care is. is the rest and peace of, of knowing who you are and who you belong to. So thank you so much for being on the broadcast today. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, well, I know it was a God thing. So it's so exciting. Y'all get this out. You can find me at movingforwardministriestn.com or keys to your best life.com. I've got, uh, for those of you that are listening to this on a podcast, it is www.cjoy, not S-E-E. -E. It's, the, it's the letter C, 
joyministries.com. You can listen to her on the radio on Sundays. You can get her book. Uh, that's The revision is coming out in the early part of 2022. And you can follow her on social media. But I want you to follow what she's saying because she's been there and she understands. So God bless you guys. We'll see you next time on Keys to Your Best Life. Bye. Thank you.